In this video, I'll show you how to get started with using macros in LibreOffice Calc. I'll do this by doing a brief walkthrough using the official LibreOffice Getting Started Guide. It's available on their website and also as a free PDF for you to download. Hopefully you can follow along and even attempt some of the other steps on your own. But I'll plan to go over adding a macro, recording and running a macro, and also viewing and editing macros. Hi, my name is Michael with Office Nifty. I make quick tips and video tutorials on how to use Calc software. So let's get into it. The guide starts off with just creating a simple hello macro. I'll provide the link to the getting started guide in the video description below. So starting with step number one of the guide, and step two is saying go to tools, macros, organize macros, basic. Now step three is saying to go to organizer, and then we should choose libraries and then we'll click the new button to create a new library and step six after using test library as the name you can click OK now we should go to the modules tab in the modules list we should expand my macros which already is and then we can choose the library we created when I expand this library, it already has a module one in there, which was automatically created. Step A is saying we can create a new module if we wanted to, and I'll give it my name as my module and click OK. Now, after the module is created, now that it's selected, we need to choose edit. And now the integrated development environment or IDE opens up and the main panel is the code and basic for my macro. There's not much here, just three lines of code and it actually doesn't do anything right now. So in step 11, it's asking us to add the new macro, either before the subroutine or after the in sub line. So here I'll make sure to copy this code and then now I'll go back to the IDE. So in the IDE, I'll just paste it by pressing Control V. And it's really optional if we wanted to keep the original line three and five or we could delete it. It really will not affect the outcome. The reason is because within the subroutine, there is no instruction or line of code for it to do anything. So it's basically unused. What I'll do is I'll turn this into a comment by typing in REM. And it stands for remark or comment. What this does is the IDE or when the macros run, it actually will ignore any line of code that is grayed out with the REM. In step 12, it says that we can try to use the compile icon. And that's this icon here. The tooltip shows me that it's compiled. When I click it once, nothing really seems to happen except that the tooltip disappeared and then reappeared. That's actually a good thing. So without explaining too much what compile does, I'll demonstrate by showing in the code what happens if I use some piece of bad code where the syntax is wrong or it won't recognize what I'm trying to tell it to do. So here, I'll temporarily just add a new line of code and maybe an extra quotation mark. Now when I click on the compile icon, I do get an error pop-up. And it's saying there's a syntax error and expects another quotation mark. The reason is because quotation marks usually comes in pairs and anything in between is usually read as a string or some sort of text. When I have a quotation mark just by itself, it really doesn't make any sense to the IDE. So now if I get rid of the extra quotation mark and I click compile, now it works just fine. There's no error message. I'll get rid of line 11 as well since it's the same as line 9. But just for fun, I'll put in a couple of emojis. Now in step 13, 
we should double click the subroutine here and then we can click on the run icon so now it shows a message with hello and the emojis I put in there success you might notice this is a warning box but that's just the default when the macro uses the print command that's okay the point of this example is to show you that you can use code to do something for you now I choose OK. So again, I'll make sure that this macro is saved. I'll click on this icon and I can close the IDE. Now back in LibreOffice Calc, to run the macro I just created, I can go up to Tools, Macros, Organize and Basic. It's, this is the same place I navigated to the first time to create the macro. Now under my test library, I can see the macro I created and here I could just choose run. It ran for me by showing my hello message again. So there you have it. That's the fast way to create a macro and run it over and over again. Now that I've gone through how to create a macro, the next section talks about recording a macro. To get started, the instructions say to make sure that this functionality is enabled. So in LibreOffice Calc, we all have to go to Tools and Options. And then under the LibreOffice section, we'll click on Advanced. And under Optional Features, make sure to check this box. Enable Macro Recording. And then choose OK. Now we can go to Tools, Macros, and the Record Macro option will show up. So if you don't see this Record Macro option, you'd have to go back to the options section and enable recording a macro. So after clicking record, what happens is this record macro window opens up and there is a stop recording button in it. So there's not much else for me to do here, but what it's waiting for is any clicks or any text that I type, it's going to record that and form that into code. So in step two of the guide, it says just typing any desired text that we want. So I did that and in step three it says to click stop recording. In step four it mentions to open the library container my macros which it already is. In step five it says look for the standard library in my macros. That's this one. Then in step six, it just says choose an existing module. So I only have module one and I click on that or I could click a new module if I want to create one. And in step seven, it says here in the macro name text box, we can give it a name. So this is important because it automatically populated main for me. But if I choose save, it's going to try and overwrite the existing macro. And I don't want that. So this happens a lot. Just make sure that you give it a new name when you're creating a new recording. So it wants us to use the name enter my name and then I'll save. So that was it for the section on recording the macro. This next section is running a macro and we're going to run the one we just created. So we'll go to tools, macros, run macro. Here it gives me annoying pop up saying JRE is required and it seems like I have to take extra steps but actually just click OK on here for this video we don't need to use that at all so I'll go back to the macro I created under this module the enter my name macro is here and I can run it now after running it it doesn't seem like anything has happened what I actually expected is for my text to appear where my cell selection was but herein lies a problem the reason this happened is my macro actually target a specific cell, which is D7 in the code. And then I'll jump to D8. And I'll show you what I mean by looking at the code. So let's get to it by going to Tools, Macros, Edit. And here it opens up the IDE. It already selected the standard library in module 1 for me. And this is the name of the macro I had put in earlier. Now, if we take a look at the code, without really understanding everything that's going on, which could be overwhelming, 
I just wanted to point to what I was saying where here it's actually using cell D7 and it even gives me this instruction which says to point then the uh, next step it puts in a text which is what I wanted it to do and then the next step is it will jump to next cell so unfortunately because it's so specific during the recording it knew that I clicked on a specific cell D7 and it also knew that I jumped to the next cell after I typed my text when I pressed enter this is problematic because every time I run the macro it will only put into one cell but I prefer it to enter it in wherever I click on the sheet. So to demonstrate again, I'll run the macro. And my macro is selected, I'll choose run. And there you go. In D7, it put in my text, and then now the cell selection went to cell D8. So all this is to show that when you're recording a macro, you have to be extra careful because if you click or type extra things in your sheet, it'll record that and it'll run that again the next time you run the macro in the future. But I'll show you a good way to record this macro to work in the way I intended. So I'll go ahead and record a new macro. And instead of clicking to a specific cell, I'll click the formula bar up here and type in my text. And instead of hitting enter, I'll click on this check mark to accept what I typed. Then I'll go ahead and stop my recording. Here I'll give it a new macro name. And I'll save. Now I try to run my macro by first selecting the cell where I want it to appear and then I'll go to the menu to run my macro. I'll choose the one I just created and I'll click run and there we go. Now it's working as I intended. It didn't specifically jump to cell D7 again. Instead it just put the text in wherever I had my cell selection. And if we look at the code you'll see that it really does what I intended to. So under module one, this is the intertext in formula bar macro. And what this code does is it'll enter a string with this text. If we compare it to the previous macro that I didn't like so much, it's a bit shorter and it doesn't include these steps of going to a specific cell or jumping to the next cell. In fact, if I comment out the code, it'll be pretty much exactly as the second macro I created. See from lines 26 to 30, it's pretty much the same as lines 50 to 54. So essentially my first macro had extra steps which limited the usefulness of my macro and the second macro just simply put in some text, which is what I want. So this concludes the section on recording a macro. The next sections in the guide is to run the macro and to view and edit. I actually briefly went into that and demonstrated in the video already, but feel free to read it on your own, specifically when it talked about editing a macro. Down here it gives a little more information regarding using REM for commenting, subroutines, and variables. Definitely if you wanted to write your own code, this is useful information, but there is a, a lot more that can be done with macros in terms of writing lines of code, loading existing ones that you want to use in your spreadsheet, or using different programming languages. That'll be outside the scope of this video, and I'll probably cover some of that in future macro videos. Just let me know in the comment section below if there's anything specific or more that you'd like to learn about. So hopefully this was helpful. I appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great day and as always, stay nifty.